Tammy Grimes. I was just dozing for a few moments, and I had a curious dream, but I can't seem to recall it. Have you ever had that experience? You're not fully asleep, just on the borderline, but your mind takes flight, and you dream strange dreams. And frequently, I recall an experience and can't quite be sure if it happened to me or I dreamed it. Those are the vivid dreams that come back to us long after we've forgotten them. Edgar Larson had a recurring dream he'd like to forget. Oh, no. Ed. No. Ed. Uh, Ed, wake up. Oh, stop. Please. Ed. Uh, oh. What? Ed, wake up. Oh. Oh, Jenny. The same dream again? Oh. Yes, I... I'm... I'm strangling to death. Ed, you've got to see Dr. Healy. Our mystery drama, You Tell Me Your Dream, was written especially for Radio Mystery Theater by Bob Duran and stars Michael Tolan. I'll return shortly with Act One. To sleep, for chance to dream. But dreams aren't always the pleasant experiences we hope they will be. There are theories about why we dream, how we dream, what we dream. Some dreams uncannily foretell the future. Others are chronicles of things that happen to us. And others, there seem no reason for some dreams we have. The horrible ones we call nightmares. Morning, Mr. Larson. Morning, Craig. I have the dossier on the Landon case for you. The Landon case? Yeah, child custody. I tracked the father to Kansas City. It's all there. Oh, yeah, oh, yes. What's up, Mr. Larson? You don't look so good. I, uh, I don't feel so good. I haven't been sleeping well lately. You lawyers never sleep well. What with a million details on your mind. Yeah, and you private eyes have no conscience, huh? Uh, we wouldn't be in the profession if we had. I'll, uh, I'll look the Landon thing over later. Hey, you really don't look good. Maybe you'd better see a doctor. <laughs> That's what my wife says. You want to talk about it? It's, uh... Well, it's, it's this nightmare I keep having. It's terrifying. I, I can't think of any reason I should dream such a thing. What is it, this uh, nightmare? I dream I'm in the Galaxy Bar, my usual hangout. Oh, no, it will. There's a man sitting with his back to me. And then for no reason, he turns around and starts to choke me. Nice fellow. We, we fall to the floor. I'm, I'm gasping for air. I can feel his, his hands like a, like a steel vice close on my throat. I, I struggle. I try to break his grip. And I, I manage to cry out for help. But the crowd in the bar just... just stares. Figures. No one makes a move. Except one man. But then I black out, and my wife's trying to wake me up. I never can get back to sleep. Do you have any angry clients? No, it's nothing based on something I've done or even thought about. I've never been threatened. Maybe you better get a bodyguard. <laughs> Look, I'm available. What I want to get is some sleep. Well, how often do you have this nightmare? Every other night for the past two weeks. I dread going to bed. Well, I'd see you dark if I were you. Maybe even give you a strong sedative. I wish you could give me another dream. Hi, Mr. Larson. Hello, Casey. Now, hold the Manhattan tonight. I'll have a beer. Okay. You were uh, still having that dream about us? I don't know if I should come in here anymore. You think maybe someday our dream will happen here? Why should I dream so consistently that someone attacks me? Nothing to worry about, Mr. Larson. Look, let's say you're here having your Manhattan, you know, like you usually do, and you see this guy come in, you know, the one who's in your dream. So you just say the word to me and pow, out he goes before anything could happen. It's not that easy. Sure it is. I mean, Freddie and me will have Casey, this... I never see his face. I don't know what he looks like. What? I never really see his face. He... He turns toward me, and, and he whispers something. I, I can't make it out. Something like, die. And then he attacks. But I never see his face. Well, how can someone strangle you and you not see their face? Because it's a dream. 
Haven't you ever tried to run in a dream and you couldn't? Or not remember a face after you woke up? Oh, the running, yeah. I guess everybody's had that dream sometime, right? You know, like your feet are made out of lead. Well, can you remember how he's dressed? Oh, just plain clothes, jeans, and a shirt, I think. I only see him from the back. When he turns, I, I lose all memory of him. Well, big guy. Small. He's got long hair, short hair. Uh, from the back, long hair. Uh, I still think that if he came in here in real life... I mean, if you think this this might happen to you sometime, that you would know him the minute he walked in, even if you don't remember his face. <laughs> Who knows? It's funny that, that I should just stand there laughing. In, in your dream, that is. I mean, anybody try to lay a hand on you in here and... Pow! I know, Casey. I'm not expecting real trouble. The nightmare is just such a, a drain on the nervous system. Then I'm awake the rest of the night. Have you seen a doctor? You're the third person to tell me I should. Maybe I will. Maybe he could explain it. I guess I better make an appointment with my doctor tomorrow. It can't do any harm. Why didn't you come to me sooner, Ed? I, I could have helped you. I thought it was just a passing dream, doctor. Well, this prescription will give you a good night's sleep. But only three times a week, at the most. I wish it were possible to change a dream. How? Well, let's say I start this dream. I, I know it's a dream... If only I could run away from the bar, say. Get away from this fiend before he starts in on me. Well, try it. If you know you're dreaming, make a conscious effort in your dream to get out of that bar. It always starts the same, with, with Casey asking me if I want another Manhattan. That's the moment to change it. If, if you had this dream so often, I should think you would realize that it's not reality. But it all happens so fast. Hmm. But I think, uh, I think you'd better make an appointment with Miss Collins for a checkup. You haven't had a complete physical for more than two years. Is there anything bothering you? Mentally? Emotionally? No, nothing special. Just the usual pressure of work. Well, can you, can you spare the time for a vacation? To get away for two weeks or so? Completely different surroundings? Bermuda, perhaps? I could, after a child custody case I'm working on. Then do it. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see this dream disappear. See Miss Collins for that appointment on your way out. How much more legwork do you think you'll have on this uh, Landon case, Craig? Oh, another week at the most. Good. I want to wrap that up and take a vacation. Change of scene? Change of dream, huh? I'm hoping so. Well, maybe I can finish up sooner than a week. Get you on your way. I'd appreciate it. Well, here's my bus. I'll call you tomorrow. Let him off, please. And take it easy, huh? I'll try. Uh, can I have a transfer, please? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, step to the rear, please. Plenty of room in back. Oh, Bermuda. Oh, Ed, what a lovely idea. And doctor's orders, no less. We can go in about two weeks, Jenny. Craig's speeding up his investigation of the Landon case. I have to get that wrapped up first. Look, I've been suggesting a vacation for months. I'm glad you're listening to Dr. Healy. I'm paying him enough. I might as well take his advice. And you've got the sedative. You'll have a decent night's sleep tonight for a change. I hope so. I want to go out like a light and not lie awake wondering where I saw that bus driver before. Oh? What bus driver? On the 107. When Craig left me at the bus stop, I got on and, and for a fleeting moment, I thought I'd seen the bus driver somewhere before. In a courtroom? A, a client? No, no, not a client. Courtroom, maybe. But I'm not going to dwell on it. Just resemble someone I've once seen, I guess. Mm. Look, why don't you take your medication and get to bed early? It's a good idea. I'm bushed. I've set the clock a half hour early. I've got a dental appointment at 8.30. Mm, that's okay by me. I'll get the light. We'll go to the cottage on Lake George. Trees, water, sun. Everything will be different. Ed, you sleep? Hmm. You are. I'll fix pancakes in the morning. You haven't been eating enough breakfast lately. Not a Manhattan, Mr. Larson? Yeah, please. One more, Casey. Then I gotta go. I got an important trial in the morning. Boy, you sure are working late these days. Yeah, more than I can handle. You should have an assistant. You ought to be dead. What? What are you doing? Stop it! Hey, no, no. <laughs> Please, 
Stop it. Hey. Stop them. Hey. He's killing him. Are you choking me? You can't. Why are you all standing there? Stop this. Joking. It's murder. Uh, it's no, murder. No. Stop it, for heaven's no. sakes. Make him stop. It's murder. Mark, Mark. Please wake up, Mark. Huh? Ellen. You, you're dreaming again. Oh. Oh. What time is it? 2.30. Oh. G- g- give me a cigarette, huh? You want a glass of water or anything? Coffee, maybe? No, no. No, 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 no nothing. Here. Oh. No more sleep for me tonight. Same dream. Yeah, the same. Every other night for the past two weeks. Always the same bar? The same man? Always. For no reason, this brute swings around and grabs this older guy by the throat. They fall to the floor and no one does a thing. The bartender even laughs. Nobody pays any attention. Is this man anyone you've known or or met? One of your passengers, maybe? Ellen, I see a hundred different faces driving the bus every day. Maybe I've seen him and maybe I have and I don't know. It's driving me bonkers. Do you want to see a doctor? A shrink? Or to tell me I hated my father and it's wishful thinking for me to see an older man killed? Look, have you ever been in a bar that looks like the one in your dream? Not that I remember. It's a completely strange place with little chandeliers hanging over the bar and a, a big plate glass window in front. The, the bartender's kind of young with blonde hair and a mustache. But you certainly have the details down. Yeah, it's so real. Like it's really happening, you know? I mean, why would I dream about a place I've never seen before? Or about a man you've never met? I wonder if I could find that bar. I mean, if it really exists, you know? I I I remember the name. Galaxy. Yeah. Maybe there is a galaxy bar. Well, I'm too wide awake to sleep. I'm going to look it up in the phone book right now. Here it is. Galaxy Bar and Grill, 40 West 3rd Street. You're really going to go there? Yeah, right after my shift tomorrow. May not be the same place at all. I don't know. I do know I've got to go there and see for myself. The old saying... It's a dream come true isn't always welcome. Not when the dream is a nightmare. It's certainly a nightmare for Ed Larson as he's attacked in a galaxy bar. And for Mark Howgate, who witnesses the murder. If I were having those dreams, I'd sleep with a light on, I can tell you. We'll go along with Mark and visit this galaxy bar, wide awake, of course, when I return shortly with Act Two. The songwriters of the world seem to have a fondness for dreams. Beautiful dreamer, drifting and dreaming. I dream of genie. And you tell me your dreams, and I'll tell you mine. Curious that in today's story, the two dreams happen to be the same. We're about to enter the Galaxy Bar on West 3rd Street. The one Mark Hargate dreams about, although he's never been there. Let's see what Mark finds. Hello? Ellen, I found it. I'm in the galaxy. Mark! What's it like? It's identical. It is the exact same place I dream about. Lights over the bar, jukebox next to the coat room, and a picture of the nude behind the bottles. It's uncanny. Mark, maybe you better come right home. Don't stay there. I'll be okay, honey. I'm just going to have a beer and look around a little more. Nothing's going to happen. This is no dream. I'm really here. Yeah, but suppose... Don't worry. I won't stay long. I'll worry. I'll leave here in ten minutes. I'll be home in an hour. All right, dear. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes, sir? Uh, A draft beer, please. Yes, sir. Hey, it's a nice place you got here. Oh, thanks. My brother owns I help him out at nights. You ever have any uh, trouble? Trouble? 
What kind of trouble? Oh, uh, fights, maybe? Hey, look, if you're planning on starting No, 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 I'm not. <laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, look, for, for more nights than I want to remember, I, I've dreamed about this place. Every detail in here is exactly the way it is in my dream. Are you serious? Yeah, and I'm not a crackpot. Do I look familiar to you? No, oh, no, I can't say I've ever seen you in here. But uh, this dream, what happens in this dream? Well, for no reason at all, one of your customers starts choking another guy. What? Nobody tries to break it up or help. Oh, oh you know, the back of my neck is beginning to crawl. What? That's the same dream one of my regular customers has. And he's the guy getting choked. In fact, he'll be in here in a little while. He comes in after work a lot. He's a lawyer. I tell you, this is weird. I bet I can describe him. Uh, about 50, gray hair, yeah. sort of a flat nose. That's Mr. Larson. I wonder if he'd recognize me. Uh, we'll know in a minute. I see he's coming in right now. Hey, hey, hey don't say anything to him, huh? Uh, let's see what he does. Hi, Casey. Hey, you make it a beer tonight, huh? Okay, Mr. Larson. He's still off to Manhattan, sir. Huh? Yeah, I gotta get some sleep. Oh, boy, it's hot for September, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, real hot. I don't think I've seen you in here before. I'm Ed Larson. Oh, hi. Uh, Mark Halgate. It's darn hot for September. Yeah. You, uh, come in here pretty often, huh? Almost every afternoon. I gotta unwind. You know, there is something familiar about your face. Have we met? Yeah, in a way. What do you mean by that? You have a dream about this bar being strangled by some dude who turns around and... You... You know my dream? I'm in it. I'm standing in the crowd, and this guy swings around and starts choking you. You're... You're the one in the crowd who tries to help. You... You shout something. Yes. And then I black out. Yeah, Mr. Larson. Uh, you two been comparing dreams? How do you know about this? Well, this guy here was telling me he has the same dream as you do. I came here because I had to see if there was such a place as the Galaxy Bar. I've been dreaming about you being strangled for two weeks. This is this is incredible. You you dream and I dream and and, and we're together in here. It's bugging me, I can tell you. But let, let's move over to a table and talk. Yeah, okay. Uh, Casey, we're we're going to a table. Okay, Mr. Larson. Hey, Marge, table for Mr. Larson. We're, we're two men who've never met. We know nothing about each other, and yet... Yet we have the same dream. At, at precisely the same time. What, what, what time do you go to bed? 11.30. Right after the noon. So do I. H how often do you have this dream? About, uh... Well, almost every other night. This... This is incredible. Maybe now that we've met, we'll stop dreaming. I wouldn't count on it. What, what made you come here tonight? Curiosity. I wanted to see if the place I was dreaming about was real. Now, you come in here pretty regularly, I take it. Huh? As often as I can. Have you ever seen the guy, the, the one who chokes you in the dreams? Has he ever been in here when you're not dreaming? I don't know what he looks like. I never see his face. You're a, a, a lawyer. Yes. Yeah, I'm a bus driver. A bus driver? Yeah. The number 107 North on Delancey to Congress Avenue. That's where I saw you. Yesterday afternoon, I took that bus for the first time. There, there was something vaguely familiar about your face, and I couldn't place it. Oh, I remember you. I told my wife the guy in the dream looked like someone I'd seen somewhere. Well, why are our paths crossing like this? You got me. You a lawyer, me a bus driver. Oh, we live in two different worlds. But inhabit the same dream world, it appears. Well, as long as it's a dream, what's the difference? Well, it seems all too, too real while it's happening. Any ideas on uh, what we should do about it? I don't think there's anything we can do. My doctor ordered a vacation, a complete rest. He, he thinks that'll clear it up. I wonder, if you stop having that dream, will I stop too? Look, let's, uh, let's keep in touch, huh? I'll give you my card. Uh, here, you, you write your name and phone on, on the back of this napkin. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. The dream is bad enough, but, but this coincidence with you is, is, is too much. All right, look, uh, here's my home phone. Look, I'm in a bus all day. You can call me nights. And you can reach me at home or the office. Huh. 
I wonder what tonight will bring for both of us. Ed, this is the wildest thing I ever heard of. I tell you, the man has the same dream down to the smallest detail. It must mean something. We'd better get away on a vacation right away. You doomed a change of scene. I don't think that's going to help. Not now. What do you mean, now? Look, if, if my dreams were caused by overwork or whatever, maybe a vacation would help. But after meeting this, this Mark Howgate, I know it's something deeper. It has to be. Why? Well, it's, it's, it's one thing to dream about somebody else. We all do. But when that somebody has the same dream about you, it's, it's uncanny. Look, we're still going away, and that's final. Even if it's just to the cabin. You know how well you sleep in that mountain air. Oh, we'll go, we'll go. I'm just not sure it's going to change anything. Ed Larson. It's Mark Howgate, Mr. Larson. Oh, hello, Mark. Uh, have you had that dream again? No, not for three nights. Hey, me neither. Well, maybe it is over with. Maybe, maybe meeting, as you said, broke the dream for both of us. Yeah, looks like it. Look, my, my wife and I are going to Lake George for a week. When I get back, I'll call you. We'll have a drink together. Hey, fine by me. Uh, unless first I'll see you in my dreams. <laughs> Don't joke about it. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll call you when we get back. Want to go down for a swim? Uh-uh, not right now. I just want to sit here and soak up the sun. Craig's coming up from the city with some papers I need. Now, I thought you were going to take it easy. This is a small matter, but I'll feel better getting it over with. You've got to admit it. This is the best medicine. I haven't seen you this relaxed in months. Oh, I admit it now. I've been sleeping like a top for the past three nights. Mm. No dreams. I'm going to make a cup of coffee. You want one? Okay. Mm. Have it in a jiffy. Then I'm going down to the deck and get my feet wet. Mmm, that sun is so great. Ah, oh, I should have done this long ago. Ah. Huh? Shots! Hey, what... What's the matter, shot? There's a bullet in the side of the house. Hey, you stay back there, Jenny. Somebody's shooting at us. Shooting at us? Now, wait. Wait, there's something moving in the trees by the lake. I'm going after him. Don't! He's shooting at us. Don't be a fool. You stay in the house. <sighs> Who's out here? What's going on? Why are you shooting? Hey, you there, stop! He's... He's gone. Did you see him? Only his back. He took an awful chance going after him. Who the devil could it have been? I don't know anyone who'd take a shot at me. I think we should call the police. I'm... I'm shaking all of a sudden. I... I gotta sit down. I'll get you a beer. Oh. Here's your coffee, love. Changed my mind about the dip. I, uh... I guess I'd better report it. Report what? The shooting. What shooting? Jenny, is something the matter with you now? Not a minute ago, somebody shot at us. Ed. You heard it, you saw it. I chased him to the lake. Ed, you were dreaming. The bullet, then. It's right here in... There's no bullet. No bullet. You dozed off. You never left the porch. But it was as real as... I mean, it happened. No, Ed. Another bad dream. Was he in it? Mark Hargate? No, no, I, I, I didn't see anyone. Except the guy taking off in the boat and... And only from the back. Have your coffee. Yeah. I tell you, Jenny, it... It was so real. I know. I've had dreams like that, Ed. When I take an afternoon nap and sort of half asleep... Well, it, it had nothing to do with Mark Howgate. That's a relief. It wasn't the same, Mark. No, Ellen, completely different. I, I was on a lake, a big lake. And I was on, like, uh, an excursion boat. And we passed this house, and I see a guy with a rifle down by the shore. He takes a couple of shots at the house. And then I see Mr. Lawson run down to the lakefront just as the guy hops in a boat and takes off. I shout and wave, but he doesn't hear me. Then he wasn't killed, like he was in the bar. No. He went back up to the house. Do you think he had this same dream? I'll only know if I hear from him. I can't call him. 
I appreciate you bringing the Martin papers, Craig. More chicken salad? Oh, no, thanks, Jenny. I'm stuffed. Mm. Look, what do you say we take the boat out, huh? We'll show you the shoreline. There's some beautiful places up here. Oh, it's great by me. I'll leave the dishes. Let's go. We'll cruise down to the village and back. Takes about an hour and a half. Ah, and we'll show you the town. I want to get a souvenir for Helen before we go back anyway. Your sister has more ashtrays and salt shakers with resort pictures on them than anyone else in the world. She's a souvenir nut. <laughs> Sounds like my mother. Hey, nice boat. Well, it's only a 15-footer, but we love it. Come on, hop in. I'll give you the wheel when we get out into the lake. Uh, no, thank you. I, I've never steered a boat before. Nothing to it. If Ginny can do it, so can you. Magnificent lake, isn't it? It's breathtaking. Here, take the wheel. Uh, now, come on, just keep her steady. Keep to the right of oncoming boats and give sailboats the right of way. Okay. Hey, this is fun. A swing more to the right, Craig. That block boat's heading right for us. What's the matter with that? Uh, you better take the wheel, Ed. They're coming at us head on. They Whoa. almost sideswiped us. Two men, and they look deliberate. They're turning around, I... I think they're going to follow us. Oh, he's got more power than I have. They're gaining on us. I'm open full throttle now. Well, they're trying to ram us. Why? Here, take the wheel. Hey, get away. What the devil are you doing? Oh, no. No, it can't be. Hey, what's the matter? I'm I'm dreaming. This is all a dream. They're cutting across. Hold on, I've got to swerve. Jenny, that's him. That's Mark Howgate in that boat. <laughs> Ed Larson thought his nightmares were at an end. Why, I wonder, does he always dream someone's trying to kill him? I assume this is a dream, out in the lake, because he saw his dream mate, Mark Hulgate. Oh, how fine the line between dreams and reality. Will Mark wake up from this nightmare, too? We'll return to the lake when I return with Act Three. Our daily experiences often enter our dreams. Forgotten acquaintances show up. And frequently our dreams seem to have no relation to things familiar to us. Haven't you dreamed of being on a strange street, meeting someone you've never seen before? Where do they come from? How do they slip into our minds? Ed Larson dreams someone is trying to kill him, and a certain Mark Howgate is always there. What? Mark Howgate. Am I, am I dreaming this? Look, I'm not dreaming, and I can't keep away from him much longer. He's making another pass. It's, it's not happening. Nothing's going to happen. I'll wake up. He's headed straight for us. I'll wake up. Don't you understand? Mark and I are dreaming this. It isn't real. It's all a dream. Here they come! They're going to swamp us! Everybody over the side. <laughs> Cut the motor, Jenny. Uh, okay. Hold on to the side. I'm okay. Jenny? Jenny, you all right? Yes. They're taking off. I felt sure they were going to plow right into us. All right, here. I'll, I'll boost you back into the boat. There. There. Oh, who the oh. devil were they? I don't know the guy at the wheel, but the one in the back was Mark Howgate. Ed. There is no way he could be here in person, and you're not dreaming. I don't know anymore. Let's get back to the house. I'm being as calm and as rational as I can. But I tell you, the man in the back was Howgate. You convinced me it wasn't a dream. We, we actually went out in the boat. We were almost torpedoed by a lunatic. But how could Howgate get up here? Ed. Can I say something? Sure. You've been pretty wrought up over this guy and his dreams, and I think maybe he looked like how It was him. He's always there on the scene when my life is threatened. Is it logical that he'd come all this way? That he'd know you were going out on a boat? 
I don't have an explanation, and I don't know why that guy tried to ram us. I'm going to report it to Lake Patrol. I wish I had a license number from that boat. It all happened so fast. I'm going to Barden's store and phone Howgate in New York. Hello? Uh, hello, is, is this Mrs. Howgate? Yes, it is. Uh, Mrs. Howgate, this is Ed Larson. I don't know if Mark's told you about me. Oh, Mr. Larson, yes. Look, I, I know it's the middle of the day and he's at work, oh, but Oh, no, I... no, he's here. He's home sick today. Summer flu bug. Oh. M may I speak to him? Oh, I'll see if he's awake. He's been sleeping most of the day. Sleeping? Oh, oh, he's coming out of the bedroom now. Hold on. It's Mr. Larson. Hello? Uh, Mark, I I'm calling from Lake George. Your wife told me you were sleeping. Yeah, that's right. You want to hear it? Yes. Well, somehow I was in a power boat. Terrific speed, you know. Someone else was driving. I was behind him. I couldn't see his face. He starts swerving and trying to ram a boat you were in. I saw you fall into the water. I was covered with spray. I woke up in a cold sweat. Mark, I was wide awake. My, my wife and my assistant were with me. For me, it wasn't a dream. Well, what's it mean? Your dream is becoming my reality. Earlier today, I dreamed someone fired shots at me. My wife insists it didn't happen. I know. I saw that, too. I was on an excursion boat and saw the dude take off and a little outboard. Look, we're, we're coming back to the city tomorrow. Would you be willing to meet with me and my doctor? We've got to work out something before... Before what? I don't know. Well, from what you've told me on the phone, Ed, I think there is cause for concern. The dreams are getting more violent. But I didn't dream the boat thing, Doctor. Only I did. Can Mark dream and, and turn up in my reality? It's very really possible. It's teleportation. People asleep or are often in comas will actually be seen hundreds of miles away. Or people will claim they saw them. There's a lot of controversy over it. I don't think that's the case here. Well, what do you suggest to stop it? If it can be stopped... Well, there has to be some psychological basis for this phenomenon. The sleep research center would be very interested. Now, would you be willing to make one test? I would. What kind of a test? I'd like to measure your brain waves during a controlled sleep. What would that prove? Well, if the brain waves show marked similarities, it may lead us to some explanation of why you appeared in each other's dreams. Well, uh, if I'm not to take off time from work... If you do it over a weekend... I'll try anything. Okay. Good. I'll make the arrangements. Now, the important thing is just to relax. Now, I know it's difficult under these circumstances. Oh, you said it, Doc. We'll be particularly interested in what you each dream. So will we. Very well, I'll leave you now. Now just lie back and try not to think of anything in particular. We'll be back when we know you're asleep. Step to the rear, please. Exact fare only. Hello, Mark. Hello, Mr. Larson. How come you haven't answered my calls lately? I can't talk now. I'm driving. I'll, uh, I'll stay on till the end of the line. I've got to talk to you. Keep out of my hair, Mr. Larson. You've got to agree to a test my doctor wants to do. I told you, no tests. And I don't want to talk to you. I'm back in a bus, please. Why are you so hostile all of a sudden? Get lost or I'll stop this bus and throw you off. Mark, I, I don't understand this. We're trying to work out something together. Why are you acting like this? I warned you. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, hey, take your hands off me. Stop, you're, you're choking me, you're... You're, you're choking. You're choking. Ed, wake up. Oh, oh, Ed. Oh, Ed. Oh, Mark. Mark, wake up. Now. Wake up. Uh, oh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Healy. Mark. Well, that. Well, oh, I remember. The lab. You two were dreaming, all right. You nearly broke the needle on the scanner. It was worse than ever. Mark was choking me. I was. It was awful. I, I felt myself committing murder. I'll give you both a sedative now. We'll analyze the scan. And tomorrow we'll have an in-depth interview and go over every detail of that dream. I 
couldn't describe the feeling, Ellen. I was choking him and meaning it. I was full of hate. And I have nothing against the guy. Mark, I'm getting frightened. And the dreams are getting worse. Can't that doctor do something? I objected to a shrink. But if that's the only way out, I'll go along with it. Well, maybe you two should stop seeing each other. In person, I mean. It's getting so I don't know when it is in person. Or a dream. I'm losing my grip on reality, Ginny. I don't know when I'm in, in person or in a dream. Dr. Healy's got to be able to do something, Ed. He's trying. The sleep analysis might help, but we're getting the results tomorrow. I should be starting the Benson tax fund case, but I can't concentrate. Maybe there is no Benson case. Maybe it's all a big dream. Ed, Ed, calm down. What's happening to me, Ginny? What is happening? Oh, dear Lord, I wish I knew. I'm trying to look realistically at a very unreal situation. Psychotherapy is the only answer. I'm willing, Doctor. So am I. Now, I have talked with the Dr. Eric Carlton. He's particularly interested in the dream phenomenon. Oh, how do you think he can help us? By getting at the roots of these dreams. Ed seems to have some persecution complex. A subconscious one, I assure you. Exactly. Your feelings that bring on these dreams are subconscious. That's why you cannot deal with them directly. I guess you're right. All I keep saying to my wife is, I don't know. Well, when we do know, we can deal with these dreams and get them out of your minds. Perhaps we're dreaming right now. None of this is really happening. Ed. I mean it. This could be our dream world. And what we think are dreams is what's really happening to us. I mean, you might not really be here sitting with us in this office. Mark and I might be dreaming it. You may really be in surgery somewhere. No, no, I'm here in reality. Oh, I hear you say that. But maybe you're a figure of my dream. I've been your doctor for 20 years. I'm hardly a figment of your imagination. I know that. You don't get what I'm saying. For me, at this moment, you're here. But what's to say that in reality, you're somewhere else? You lost me a long time ago. Well, Dr. Carlton will be able to deal with your thoughts. Maybe and maybe not. He first has to convince me which side of the line is reality and which is dream. I think I'm beginning to see. I told Ellen I was getting to a point of not knowing when I was in person or in a dream. When this all started, I woke up and I knew I was dreaming. Now, uh, I'm not so sure. The sooner you two get started with Dr. Carlton, the better. Work out your appointments with him. He's expecting your call. All right. Come on, Mark. I'll buy you a drink. Hello, Casey. Oh, hi, Mr. Larson. You, uh, you remember Mark Howgate? Sure, sure. The dreams and all. Hey, tell me, you still having them? Yes, but let's not talk about it. Okay. What'll it be? Uh, Manhattan. A beer. Coming right up. Uh, where's it going to end for us, Mark, huh? Will we be friends when this is all over? I don't think so. What, what's the matter? You know, you're always sitting on that same stool. And he's sitting on this one. Right next to you. Who? He turns towards you. Here you are. It's one Manhattan and a beer. Mark, what, what's the matter? You got the strangest look on your face. What is it? Something wrong? He's always sitting right here. Just like I am now. Who, Mark? Who? The murderer. He turns around, sudden-like, like this. Mark, what, what are you doing? He's <laughs> joking, Mr. Lott. He's just kidding. And he says, <laughs> you ought to be dead. <laughs> Mark, this, this is our dream. You ought to be dead. Hey, take your hands off me. It's, it's, it's not happening. It's, it's got to be the dream. It's not the uh, dream, Mr. Larson. We're wide awake. Uh, He's just pulling your leg. Uh, you're, you're choking me. Uh, Come on, take it easy, will you? This is going far no. enough. <coughs> dream. It's the dream. It's all a dream. Isn't it?
was it? Two men whose lives intermingled so strongly in so short a time. Two men who lost the barrier between reality and dreams. The canyons of the mind are deep and often dark. In them lurk thoughts we barely dream of. If you'll pardon the slight irresistible pun. But when we dream, who's to say it's not reality for us? Another thought on dreams when I return shortly. Deja vu is one of those experiences that approximates a dream. You know, when you have the strange sensation of having been in a certain place before, or a fragment of conversation is remarkably familiar, did you dream it once, or did you experience it once in a long forgotten reality? When you think about it, the mind is a fabulous place to live. Our cast included Michael Tolan, Bob Caliban, Cynthia Adler, and Mandel Kramer. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Grimes inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.